Hi guys, Carl here down at Sunshine Sailing Australia. This is another episode of Cruising with Carl. I hope you enjoy it. G'day everyone, here we are, another week. We're talking tides. Uh, we're gonna split this topic up into the first one, which is going to be just the effects of water flow over the boat, over the uh, keel and the rudder, and how we can use that uh, in a tidal flow uh, area to bring our boat onto a dock or into a berth. Um, and then the next video, we'll start to include some other variables. So we'll start to apply some wind and tide situations. And we'll look at some of the uh, best ways of kind of getting into a berth uh, in some more complex situations. Bear in mind, uh, many different sized boats with different heights of uh, structures and top sides and different shapes of the hull. So, you know, there's not uh, necessarily a hard and fast rule for everything. And you'll have to kind of learn your vessel and and see what's happening on any particular day with the combination of wind and, and water movement. Um, but we'll look at some of the kind of principles that we can apply. So let's get into this uh, week and just look at uh, the effects of water flow and tide on the boat. Okay, so here we are in our uh, river system. Uh, we've got the banks here. So here's a one grassy bank with some trees on it, another one over here. Um, and here's our, here's our river and uh, we've got tide um, flowing through this through this river system. Now, uh, the first thing is uh, what effect that tide has. It can really work in our favour. Um, usually, when we're approaching a uh, let's say a dock um, on the side of the river, if we didn't have any tide and this was a still body of water, we would have to make our way with uh, speed through the water so that we maintain steerage, because we only have steerage when there's water flowing over our rudder. So whether we're coming in bow first or, or we're coming in um, stern first and whether we're coming from this side or wherever, we're, we'd be moving relative to the water, which is relatively still if it had no tidal effect. And we'd also be moving relative to the, uh, to the dock that we're coming along. along. So with tide, if we apply tide in a space like this and say the tide's going this way and it'll just be reversed if it's going the other way, what then happens is um, we, we're presented with some choices. So in the absence of any wind, um, if this was a, a tide that was running at say one and a half knots, if we approach the dock from this angle, to maintain, to have forward, uh, to have water flowing over our rudder um, in a forwards direction in the way that we'd usually um, expect it to be coming in like this, we'd have to be going faster than 1.5 knots to offset the water flow because the water's moving. So we'd have to be coming this way faster than one and a half knots, probably more like two to two and a half. And that's gonna be very a very quick approach onto that dock. Here's where it works in our favor. If we come in this way, we can sit here off the dock with no relative movement to the dock itself, to the land, but with one and a half knots of water flowing over our keel and rudder, which will give us very good maneuverability and steerage. So we can eff effectively stop the boat here relative to the land, knowing that that water's going under us and just steer the boat sideways in to this dock. And we could do that with the nose pointing into the tide, or we could do it, and it's quite often done uh, with the stern uh, in it. Just uh, can be a little bit easier. So we'd have the engine uh, going astern, just holding, just quick enough to hold us steady against the dock, and we could transit up you know this tree here, and say another, and say another tree, um, just to just to confirm by sight that we're uh, not moving one way or the other against this dock. And then, if this is our boat, and we're here, if we turn our rudder to starboard, so we turn the wheel to starboard, and bear in mind our our head would be facing this way, that would turn the rudder this way relative to the boat, and then the tide would hit that and pull the boat in. And we would continue to adjust that rudder and 
bring us and just sit us alongside the dock. It's a very nice approach to a dock because we're not moving, we've got no speed relative to it this way. We're only just setting ourselves against it. This is called fairy gliding. And it's one of the real benefits of tide. So we could use, we could come up against the tide with a small amount of speed if we preferred that, either astern or, or, or forward. Um, or we could sit off the dock and just fairy glide and sit ourselves against it. And all we'd need to do is, is uh, get a stern line on there and then the boat will just sit against here. We will use the tide um, again to come off the berth when we get to that situation. But if we were to approach it again from this way with the tide, we would have to carry a lot of speed in um, to maintain our proper kind of steerage. So, um, so yeah, better off to approach in this situation against the tide or from here. So um, let's look at it with regards to a marina. Okay, so here we are. Here's our boat. We're coming. We're coming in here, and we've uh, and we've got a bit of tide running. Actually, the tide's going to be running with us, running this way. X here marks our spot, marks our berth. Um, this is a pretty big marina. Comes a, a lot, a long way across the river, uh, and then we've got a whole range of other docks and berths here. And I've just blocked that out with a big green square, really. So. Um, yeah, so look, we're, we're looking to bring our vessel into, into this dock here. And in this situation, the tide's running this way. So it's pushing us back out of our berth once we come around the other side. So this one's a pretty straightforward uh, uh, approach, really. Um, we're we're going to come down the marina and we can finish in here either with our stern in. So we could go in this way or we could go in uh, bow first. So... We just need to choose which way we want to approach, really, uh, how we want to how we want to finish up. Do we want the stern on so we can talk to people walking past the dock when we're in? Um, do we want them to be able to step aboard easily for a beer or wine? It's it's just our preference in this situation. So uh, the first thing is, if we were to go bow in uh, as we came along this way towards our berth, if we just steered the boat straight on at a right angle, straight directly at the land, we are gonna end up going like this. So we're gonna crab our way in. We have to turn the boat like that to take us across the river, just to offset this tide. And that angle will change depending on how much tide there is. If we went in stern, we'd come past, we'd put the engine in reverse, wait for the boat to move backwards relative to the water that's flowing, and then We'd be doing the same thing. We'd be crabbing, um, crabbing our way across. But once we got that uh, uh, comfy, then we'd just come across and turn ourselves in. And we could use the tide and our rudder to pull ourselves against the dock. If we came in a little bit this way, a bit close to that boat, we just turn the rudder again, that way against the tide and we'd end up against the, the berth the same as, as we did against the dock over here. And if we came in nose in, we'd come along, we'd turn in and we'd just turn the boat so that the uh, water was, once we were ready to sit against, was just hitting against our starboard side of our keel and that would press us up against the dock and we'd get a bow line on and, and we'd be in there. So that one's pretty straightforward. If the tide is is pushing us into the dock, um, this one's just got a couple more consequences because when's the when the tide's going this way, if we mess something up, it's pretty easy for us to get back out as long as we don't land a land back over here. When it's pushing us into the dock though, oh sorry, into the berth, um, coming through this way, then um, we just want to make sure we can get ourselves back out. And this is um, for me personally. I prefer in this situation to, to come in um, and throw it around stern first. And, and really the reason for that is I want to be able to get water flowing forward over my rudder as quickly as possible. And I find with a lot of vessels, and this is due to the way, where the propeller is relative to the rudder in that it's just in front of the rudder, when you put the boat into forward gear, you can push water over the rudder pretty quickly and thus get um, steerage almost immediately. 
when you're coming forward with the tide and then you need to stop the boat and move it backwards against the tide, you need a lot of stern, a stern propulsion, a lot of reverse propulsion to get the boat moving backwards against the water. Because if you don't get that happening, then you don't have any water flowing across your rudder and you don't have any steerage. So if we were to get in here with our nose in and then we had to quickly get back out and depending on the type of boat, some of them take a long time to respond, some of them take a long time to start going backwards and you'll have a lot of prop walk um, firstly, which pulls the stern one way or the other. And it can be, uh, your response time can be significantly hampered if you get nose in and then you need to try and get back out. Whereas if you're already going astern, you've already got a stern mo uh, movement over the water this way, then you can throw it around and then you can give it a quick burst of forward propulsion to quickly maneuver yourself up against the dock and, um, and sit yourself uh, in there. So that's my preferred approach when the tide's pushing me in, it would be to crab along like that, throw it around, and then vroom, and it's in up against the dock. Okay, so that's tide, um, how we can use tide to our benefit without any other external forces, without any wind. And um, look, next week we'll talk about a variety of different wind and tide situations. So this won't be bow and stern, because we've kind of talked about bow and stern approaches throughout the videos so far, and it'll just be another one on um, some um, situation, uh, different um, situations with wind and tide. Okay, thank you. Please post any um, notes or comments or let us know uh, what you do with your boat because we uh, we're always learning on the water and um, You know if there's any uh, good ideas you've got and ways that you do this, please let us know. Thank you Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode um, As always you can find more information in the link and please feel free to comment and ask us any questions Yachting is one of those things that's got many different variables in it different types of boats different conditions uh, so we'd love to hear your experience as well and any of your own tips and we'll include those in the videos. Thanks again and until next time.